When we talk about the regulation of business, this public governance of private entities, a lot of people are particularly interested in the regulation of foreign firms. In some sense, that's an understandable instinct. Uh, many people are nationalistic, patriotic, and they're concerned that uh, maybe foreign entities don't act in local interests. A lot of the discourse around globalization touches long-standing concerns about the power of the uh, uh, cosmopolitan, displaced, other, this entity from abroad that may not empathize with local stakeholders. And particularly since the 1960s, there's been a lot of critical discourse, a lot of criticism of unaccountable multinational enterprises or transnational enterprises, MNEs or MNCs, multinational companies, MNEs, multinational enterprises. Uh, very often the, uh, the sentiments behind it are just uh, simple tribalism, uh, a fear of the unknown or of the outsider. And of course, with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we also have seen the rise of intense localisms. Uh, which are not necessarily uh, national versus the foreign. Indeed, if there's one interesting thing uh, from an analytical point of view in terms of identity and exclusiveness, that even at the state or the prefectural or the town or the village level, there can be very strong local identities and a distrust of the outsider. So the politics of a lot of the regulation of foreign investment it comes down to a mixture of sentiment and very often politicians responding to these kind of almost tribal instincts versus a range of economic issues, the uh, good and the bad of foreign enterprises that range from things like bringing technology to fears of market dominance because of their greater size, issues of taxing foreign companies and what the, how they might engage in what we call transfer pricing, shifting profits from the country they're in to either their home country or a third country where the tax rate is low. Those issues have been coming up time and time again, particularly since the 1960s, but also with the rise of huge internet companies such as uh, Google and Facebook, these issues have come to the fore again, similarly with uh, Apple. If you're interested in reading a particular case study of the political economy of Australian investment, uh, of Australian foreign investment policy, uh, my PhD thesis is publicly available online. It's only about 380 pages, so I expect absolutely nobody in the class will have a look at that. But anyway, uh, I can go on about it for hours and hours and hours, so I won't. Uh, all I will simply say is that uh, there are a few basic regulatory requirements in the vast majority of countries for foreign firms. And typically foreign firms have to create a legally uh, incorporated entity in the country in which they operate. So they create a subsidiary, a core geisha. Now, that subsidiary is created under local law, wherever they are, which means that the start point is that the business entity, the corporate entity, may be foreign owned, but it is operating through a legal construct, a company that is required to follow the local laws just like any locally owned company is. Of course, then there are questions on things like transfers of profits from the local company, the subsidiary to the parent and whatnot, and that's where many of the fights uh, come about. Uh, other issues too about how committed to a particular market to maybe manufacturing and employing people in a local market compared to any global operations uh, a company is. But of course there's no reason to say automatically that a locally owned company is more committed to local employees, is less likely to offshore, for example, its manufacturing to China or another low cost destination such as Vietnam. So these are really case-by-case -case issues. We do see, because of the sensitivity of some sectors, such as the media, broadcasting, some infrastructure, such as ports, airlines, airports, many governments in the world 
do closely regulate foreign ownership and control of those kind of critical assets. For the most part, scholars of international business have come to the general view that accepting the tax issues and certain sensitive issues of infrastructure and also foreign government controlled companies, for the most part, societies have benefited greatly from having quite liberal, quite open foreign investment regimes. We will see the politics of localism arise again after the COVID-19 pandemic and also the rise of China and the sheer scale of China and its foreign investment has again made foreign investment a politically sensitive issue. So you can expect a lot more controversy. Uh, I still don't expect anyone to read my PhD thesis about it, but it is an interesting set of issues. We should not lose sight of the fact though that uh, Governments do have very powerful regulatory mechanisms for controlling both local and foreign-owned but locally incorporated businesses. And insofar as governments are weak in the face of foreign companies, it's because either they fear the loss of benefits that a foreign investment would bring, the economic boost, the employment creation, or because generally the state is weak as a in general, that it equally doesn't have the capacity to impose its will on powerful local companies, just as it might not have the power to impose its will on foreign companies that can threaten to leave. So very often the reasons why people worry about the regulation of foreign investment often comes down more to inadequacies of the state and its regulatory capability in general, rather than specific issues with foreign investment and foreign firms.